Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We've got an awesome rifle we're going to be showing you guys today and this is actually not the first time I've had one of these on the channel. Uh, Ray and I uh, at Moss did a video on the DRD Paratus a long time ago. It was sort of a bench top. Well, we finally have one uh, here in the flesh to take out and uh, shoot out to range for you. We're going to be shooting out to 650 yards. And the Paratus is a really awesome offering from DRD. Uh, this particular gun uh, sort of represents their flagship model. This is the gun that put them on the map, the one that got them started, the one that most people are familiar with the company DRD because of this gun. Uh, Special Operations requested a, an entry, okay, for their clandestine uh, sniper rifle project. And basically they wanted a gun yep. that could pack down really compact, like into a suitcase or something small, and then be able to be deployed into an area discreetly, uh, get in, get, get in real quiet, unpack the rifle, and then you've got basically a sniper rifle that can pack down into a, a small compact case. And that is how this particular gun was born. It took them a little over two years to develop this gun, and this does represent uh, definitely one of their flagship products. This one is chambered in a 7.62, uh, you can also get these in 6.5 Creedmoor. This one has a 16-inch barrel. Uh, so really cool setup. It is a full takedown, a direct gas impingement gun. This one is equipped with the ever-awesome Superlative Arms gas block, uh, which is fully adjustable. Now, we are running a Hux Work suppressor on this particular gun. Full pick rail all the way across the top of the rifle. Uh, this is a side charge unit, so you don't have a uh, T-handle back here for gas to bleed through. Uh, it does have an internal recoil uh, system, which means that you get to mitigate the buffer assembly, which means you can actually fire this rifle folded if you wish. So you do have the folding Magpul stock, uh, Magpul grip on this particular gun. That allows the gun to be put into a bit more compact configuration for traveling in a vehicle once it's together. Uh, this one is equipped uh, with an Atlas bipod on this particular gun. Uh, we definitely love our Atlases here. We've got an ACSS uh, Griffin mill from Primary Arms. Uh, this particular optic is one of their ruggedized units. Very, very capable. We've shot these on a ton of different guns and they work out great. Uh, Primary Arms makes a great uh, mid to higher level uh, optic. They're, they're just fantastic and uh, they track beautifully. So hopefully we can demonstrate that. Now we are getting atmospherics and getting our dope uh, figured out with a Kestrel 5700 Elite. We do have the weather vane set up, so it's over here collecting data. And we're experimenting with a new uh, device from Kestrel called the HUD. HUD stands for Heads Up Display. It sends the information from the Kestrel over here to my HUD, and I've got basically an electronic dope card that is actively feeding me atmospherics uh, as we go, all right? So as conditions change, it lets me know, and then I, I, I know if I need to play with my windage or whatever. So uh, this feeds from uh, standard SR25 style magazines. Obviously, we see it comes with PMAGs, so we're going to put a PMAG in here and uh, give this gun a try, have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna shoot it 100 out to 650. I think 650 can definitely show the capabilities of what this gun can do. Uh, we are shooting 175 grain Sierra Match Kings. Uh, it's federal gold medal match uh, factory ammunition here today. Uh, and so far, man, it is so awesome. You do have an ambidextrous safety. The safety is a little blocky and squared off. It can be a little bit difficult to get to depending on, you know, uh, that the strength of your thumb, uh, you know, I, I wish maybe they'd give maybe a little more length and leverage there on that safety, but all in all, not bad. You do have an ambi safety as well as this uh, sort of bad lever here that allows you to lock the bolt to the rear uh, with your trigger finger. Some people don't like them. Some people aren't a fan of them. I, I do like them uh, just fine. And uh, this is a 20 round PMAG. Let's have a little fun here. I'm going to start out. Uh, we're zeroed at 100. We got our dope card set up. Chad is spotting. And uh, Chad is running a Leopold Mark IV spotter with a tactical milling reticle in it. Spotter up. All right, let's have some fun. I mean, I shouldn't have to spot for you at 100. I hope not. Okay. Center mass? Yeah. Okay. Okay, two. All right, we're zeroed at 200 yards. So we are running a 200 yard zero. Our hanging gong should be dead on the money. All right, I'm gonna check the wind. Showing a 0.23 right wind hold. Okay. That looks about accurate. That looks about accurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dial that in real quick here and just give it a slight hold. 
right and send it in, hopefully center mass. Ready? Yep, send it when you're ready. Okay. Center mass, right on the money. Okay, we're gonna go out to 300 yards. Okay. Let's see. I'm move this over just a little bit. Okay, 300. All right, that's just our single hanger. Okay, 300 is gonna have us at 297. That's 0.83 up. So I'm gonna go ahead and make our correction. I'm just gonna dial 0.8. That should get us in the ballpark. All right, now 300 yards. This is a half size D28 at 300. Uh, we are calling for at three, we're looking at a 0.68 right wind hold based on our current atmospheric conditions. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my correction for wind and send the round. You ready? Spot her up, send it. Off the right. Uh, actually, you were a little high, uh, right over the top, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? My, my, I used the, uh, the wrong hold on this optic. All right, let's try that again. Okay. That was, that, that was a shooter's error. Okay, you used the wrong line? <laughs> yep, All right. I used the wrong line. All right, hold on. Um, let's see. You're aiming at the um, D28 on the stand? Yes, I am. Okay, uh, fire one more. Center mass. Uh, yeah, the wind didn't bunk it at all. Yeah. I was hoping for wind based on what the Kestrel was telling me, and it, it wasn't necessary. I guess the wind died down. All right, one more. Yeah, that was a little bit left. It, it did push. Look, I'm going to try a headshot. I think I can hit it. Okay, go ahead. A little bit of wind picking up. Hmm. There that we go. Beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna go out to 400. That's calling for 1.92. We're gonna go at 1.9. All right, and we have another D28 down there. Okay, that's a hanger. And we are calling for, at that distance, we're looking at almost a whole value wind hold to the right. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the wind hold they're saying we need and uh, send around and see what happens. Okay. Ready? Send it. Yep, impact. Center mass. Center mass. Yeah, I'm pleased that, with that. That was nice. That was a fist size group. Beautiful. All right, I tell you what, I think we got it dialed in. I'm going to try uh, put one in the boiler room on, on the coyote down there. All right, he ain't ready. Oh, just under his neck. Impact. Just under his belly. Impact. Impact. Okay. We're gonna go out to, this time we're going out to 550? Uh, five. Five. Yep. All right, that's uh, 3.21. All right, we're gonna dial 3.2. Okay, and we're going out to five. Five is gonna be the stick-in. That is correct, half size stick-in. All right, and that's calling for a 1.47, no, 1.18 right on the wind. So yep. I'm gonna hold for wind and send one in and see what happens. Spot Ready? Oh, I shot right where I was looking. Actually, yeah, the wind didn't affect it at all. Sure did. Wow. Well, I held in the right location. All right, that was 20 rounds of a gold medal match. This is a SR25 metal magazine we're going to try just so we can um, play around with some different mags. Okay, give these a try. This gun is ridiculously smooth. The trigger is excellent. I really love it. Um, not bad at all. The gun does have a considerable amount of heft. It is, it is heavy. Um, when it's broke down in its smallest configuration, it's very easy to carry around. It's very indiscreet and, uh, you know, that are discreet. And that, that's really what it's intended to do is to accomplish that goal. And um, I do believe some of these have been used by our military. I mean, this was, you know, put up for uh, special operations uh, at, at their request. So I'm pretty sure some of these have been fielded here and there. And uh, it's meant to kind of 
serve the role of an M110 or something like that, but in a more of a, you know, packable unit that's easy to take down and sneak in and get the job done, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, 16 inch barrels, definitely more than enough to deliver the goods with a 308 at these distances. So, uh, all right, we've gotten her dialed to 3.2. 3.2 is putting us on, uh, again, that's 500 yards this time. So we're gonna shoot 500. And this time I'm just gonna aim dead on at the stick in. Yeah, like where the target is, there's just a little bit of a boil. So let's see okay. where we at. You got it. Impact. Impact. It just off the uh, left side, the wind must have picked it up. Impact. Just off the left side, wind picked it up. All right, to get out to 600, we're at 4.62. 4.6. All right, lock her down. I really like these primaries. I mean, for what these optics cost, they are just absolutely fantastic. And our current wind uh, hold for that range, we're looking at a 1.46 right wind hold. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that correction and then we'll send a round in. We've got a uh, 22 inch round down there. So it's a fairly large target. Now this gun is starting to heat up a good bit. It is 100 degrees of pure hot soup out here and bugs. So that's uh, certainly adding to the challenge here. Okay. Spot her up, send it when ready. Impact. 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 Good deal. We in there? You were in there. Um, I'm gonna make a minor correction after we're done. Wow, man, it's pitting the ace at six, baby. Yep. Woo! So we have not calibrated this uh, particular load yet in this rifle, and it's it's a little bit low, uh, probably three tenths of a mil. So I'll Look, make that correction. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a um, correction here on the optic. Yeah, go ahead. And so go to the, the six. It, it, to get to six fifty, it calls for four uh, five point four nine. I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, five point eight. Yeah, go five point eight. Give it that three tenths correction. It should be pretty close. Okay, so. now we're gonna go ahead and proceed out to 650. This is a hard target to hit. It's a half size D28, it's pretty small, and I also have an eight inch popper. So if we can get this thing hitting right where we want, we should be able to engage the eight inch popper with this gun at 650. So you can see where in the accuracy department, this gun certainly delivers the goods and what the intention is. You know, I, I use the term sniper rifle lightly because a sniper rifle is any rifle, rifle that a sniper happens to be using. <laughs> uh, that's the definition, right? But um, for what their intended purpose, I guess a special purpose rifle, a clandestine takedown rifle, that sort of thing, uh, it certainly excels in this environment quite well. And of course, in combination with the Kestrel, this is just absolutely wonderful. It's such a great shooting experience, super smooth recoiling. Um, so we're gonna go out to 650 and our dope is calling for on 650, that's a 1.62 right hold. But here's the thing, the Kestrel's here. We got this wind coming in across the field. The trees are down there, and if the wind is coming in the direction they say it is, in this direction, uh, well, yeah, it'd be coming this way. Uh, the trees are gonna block that wind a little bit. So just because the Kestrel's telling me that, that value, it may be actually in practice a bit less because of the trees banking some of the wind, okay? So let, I'm gonna that's say accurate. that uh, instead of 1.62, that's what it would call for, I'm gonna maybe just split the difference. I'm gonna what, cut that wind value. What were you half. holding at six? Uh, about half of what the wind value okay. was. So I'm, yeah, I'm so gonna cut like, the wind. You know, 0.75. Yeah, roughly. I'm gonna do a 0.75 and see if that gets us out to 650. Yeah. There's just a little bit of a right left boil down there, mm -hmm. just slightly drifting along so I'm gonna hold on the right edge of the plate and just we're gonna lob one in and see what happens all right spot her up okay impact uh, hold uh, right another two tenths impact Couldn't see it. There's a lot of mirage. Yep.
Couldn't see it. It's a long way and we are getting a good bit of heat mirage off the suppressor. So it's making getting a good sight picture kind of tough. And this optic does not really have a lot of extra L of uh, power. So it's a challenging shot to get out to this distance. But at six, I'm looking at that group and that's a pretty hot, hot looking little group there at six. It is. So the gun has definitely got uh, the goods in the accuracy department for sure. I'm liking that. All right, let me just try a few more shots here. All right, you're gonna have to give it um, another half a mil wind. All right, good deal. Yep. I well, we got another magazine to test. So okay. uh, there was a couple of different brands of SR25 metal mags that we had. One I think was an old uh, Armalite, possibly looks like that follower is probably an Armalite follower, and this one looks like one of the DPMSs or possibly a Stoner one. So we're gonna give that a try real quick. Uh, okay. What's going on here? There we go. I just, Locking in. I just wasn't hitting it hard enough. Huh. Okay. 650. This time we're going to add two tenths extra wind. Uh, five tenths. Five tenths. Yeah, half a mil. Okay, half a mil. All right. Send him one. Ready? Send it. Impact. Impact. In fact, oh yeah. Good little string in there. I'd just be quiet because you're just peppering it. Yeah, it it it, it is kind of getting in there, but uh, I wanted to just you know kind of get a few rounds down range and see how this thing did. So uh, that worked out well. So the metal mags are great. The uh, SR25 mags are looking good. Uh, 650 yards is a pretty good little stretch for a semi-auto, and especially at that rate of fire. I mean, you know, it's starting to open up a little bit there, but you know it really does shoot great and it gives the, the operator the capability to have fast follow-up shots which is what i was really trying to demonstrate uh, you know bolt guns are great they do have good velocity good accuracy definitely good accuracy uh, but the, you know they do represent a slower reloading time and uh, you know they do require a considerable amount more training to really get to, to know them really well uh, but this gun is exceptional and uh, the paratus is one of their flagship rifles uh, with very good reason, because this thing really delivers the goods. Uh, this gives the end user the capability to uh, have a gun right out of the case. It takes about a minute to put together. It's not terribly long at all. Uh, now, this thing is so viciously hot right now, I'm not gonna dare touch it without gloves on or anything, but it's really not difficult to deal with. I do like the side charge. Um, that's a great feature on this particular rifle. Also, it is a non-reciprocating charging handle, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, this gun does marry a lot of concepts that I think are awesome. It's got some sort of FAL vibe going on. Of course, you got the direct gas impingement that they take from the AR. It obviously has an AR uh, aesthetic. Um, but it fixes a lot of the inherent issues with the AR and um, it's definitely an improvement of the original system of the uh, Eugene Stoner's original design. And uh, I think a gun like this represents certainly the top of the paradigm that you can get to when it comes to a auto loader, especially to be a takedown and to uh, integrate so many cool features into the construction. It really is a special piece of hardware. And I'm hoping that in time, we can maybe take this out to some longer ranges, do some more longevity testing. In our initial testing, uh, the accuracy is fantastic. The groups are great. Um, it handles a wide variety of different ball ammunition. Uh, we haven't had a problem with any ball we've put through it. It, it eats match ammo just fine. The 175 is, is really my choice of bullet weight to shoot in a 308. I think it's, uh, it's great. They bunk the wind really good. Uh, they do have a little bit more dope required to get out the long range. I mean, to get that 650 yard shot, uh, you know, we, we were looking at a 4.62 come up. 
uh, no, I'm sorry, a, a 5.49 come up. So that's, that's a lot more. A 6.5 Creed, for instance, uh, like the bolt gun that we just did a video on, a Bagheera, uh, that one, I believe the 6.5 Creed only had about 4.3 mils of come up uh, to get out to 650. So uh, with the flatter shooting, 6.5 Creed more, uh, I would love to get a barrel in 6.5 Creed out for this particular gun. That is one of the awesome features of this being a takedown is that you can simply swap the barrel and nothing else, you don't have to change anything. So if you order uh, one of these rifles, if you order Paratus, uh, you can order the 6.5 barrel as an extra and then just swap the barrel out and readily go between the two cartridges without changing uh, hardly anything at all. You may have to make a slight gas uh, adjustment setting if you're gonna use the same can, but for the most part, um, generally in the ballpark. I would love to test one of these out in 6.5 Creedmoor, so I'm hoping maybe that can be something uh, we wind up doing in the future. Have yourselves a great day. Many more videos on the way. I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one. Many more coming. We'll see you soon.